just test it one more time since I'm so nervous now. Okay. so fidgety that this chair doesn't move that I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> I mean, I'm used to my squeaking. I mean, actually, this is quite comfy. I mean, I like this, but I mean, as you said, it's not quite as movable. Oh, that's okay. Funny. That ain't done that. That square is so crazy. Well, yeah. I mean, is it too... <laughs> well, hopefully the sound is working. <clears throat> if not, we'll <laughs> I will say now that I finished it, I can't say that I loved it. Okay. But I really, really liked it. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, I am. Um, um, my opinion quite differs because it hasn't improved much. <laughs> I still don't like it any more than I thought. <laughs> just because it it is superbly written but just how it was written I I, I don't like it I, I really uh, love how it was like all over the place uh, maybe and that's why. George is the speaker it's very almost analytical but he's dying so it's not clear mm -hmm. so like he's trying to analyze things he doesn't know what it is mm -hmm. and then when Howard is like the speaker fancies himself a poet so it almost gets poetical at times mm -hmm. there was a line how he described having an epileptic seizure i can't remember the word he used it started with a b but it was like it was just a really pretty line and it, mm -hmm. it fit howard and then even little things so like when howard got remarried and that whole couple pages of that woman rambling yeah that i thought that was wonderful and how it just how it just all he didn't he just Crammed it all together like a clock. <laughs> yeah, I definitely see your your point, but it, it it just doesn't redeem any um redeem the book for me. Nothing redeeming or just well, I mean it. There were some beautiful passages. Right. I mean that I just loved, but just overall, I, I probably wouldn't give it higher than a three star rating. So you at least give it a three. Right. Right. I mean. No higher than a three, but definitely no lower than a 2.5. <laughs> you get all technical. <laughs> like a clock. Yeah! Maybe I didn't enjoy the book as much as you did because I, I don't like when anything gets too technical. And some parts got too tedious and technical for me. And I just got, I mean, I, I was ready to be done with it. You kept having those fake passages of like the workbook, mm -hmm. the horologist manual or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And then the end and you think it's another one of those but it's actually like something Howard wrote like a pamphlet and I thought that was a neat little like <clears throat> what's the not a trick but like a little twist like a little uh yeah I don't know what's everything <laughs> I can speak and then this thing is on and like every <laughs> every single word just goes away it's all about not the families but fathers George is dying and as he's dying like a memory of Howard mm -hmm. and then the part where he's even talking about Howard's father it's not George remembering the minister it's Howard, Howard. you got to think of it as Howard telling George or then later the new wife mm -hmm. like how does George know she's talking so fast because George is still the main character mm -hmm. it implies that when Howard comes back and they imply keep in touch it implies that he does mm -hmm. because that's in the 50s and now they're in the 70s and George somehow knows how the wife is like and even little details like the wife's mother that Howard didn't even know about. It's all it's all there. It's <clears throat> like a clock. <laughs> little piece has to turn just right to make sense of it. Almost side stories, the little tall tales about, you know, uh, Sabatis. Sabatis. Yes. He would never speak, but he'd get paid in taffy, and he had the roommate that they never like interact. Mm -hmm. He had the side story about the, 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 the hermit. Gilbert the Hermit. Gilbert oh, the Hermit with his with his pipe, story, and, yeah. or, or the story with the family <clears throat> with the house that burned down. There's all these little like memories that he doesn't even realize that affected him so much when he was mm -hmm. younger that all come into play, and it's like all about I guess the mystery since his father did disappear. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting. No, I didn't expect him to eventually go back to visit. Well, or just just leave yeah. the. The family in general, because, mm -hmm. but I, 
I mean, but it was just George who he saw, right? I right. mean, because he ended up going on Christmas. Christmas Day, he found he Day. found George, and then he asked that about everyone else. That was so bothering me, actually. I mean, I but I was really so. Why do you think he made the choice to just bypass his house in the first place? I mean, well, and then just go to a completely different. Well, he knew he wasn't crazy. <laughs> it was yeah, the, it was the wife that was trying to send him away just because he had seizures and. And they made a point to talk about the city that he moved to. It was like Philadelphia or Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Yeah. And it's a rural area in Maine. And they made the point that in Maine, the seizures were seen as, as a mental illness. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Pittsburgh, there was doctors and he rarely had them. They put, they put them on the medicine. And like, it was just, they put that little contrast in there. And so was it his, his second wife who sort of realized that he was not mentally right. ill, but but had. And the two wives too, because like you even mm -hmm. mentioned how the one wife never spoke and she secretly got them the pamphlet for the insane mm -hmm. asylum, where the other wife, I think he married her just because she never stopped talking. <laughs> like it, it was just this, everything had this dual, dual, you know, like a, like a, like a, <laughs> a noon and six o'clock or oh, yeah. three and nine, everything had a, Yes, I mean, I think um, you really have, have to dive deeper uh, and analyze mm. books sometimes to truly understand and then get the feel of it. Like try to skim through it. The story wouldn't quite be there. Break it down to the pieces, I think it's there. If you, I mean, I think anyone who read a different section of this book would think it was a completely different right. <laughs> I like even like yeah. halfway through the paragraphs, the it would go from third person to first person or past to present. Everything was so jumbled. I mean, because it's still George's <clears throat> brain is mm -hmm. slowly fading. I really liked I the um, idea behind it, but but I wasn't crazy just about the disparate. I guess the disparateness of it all. But I mean, I guess. It it all comes together like the pieces of a <laughs> clock, as you said. <laughs> you you find the parts where Rook was in the field, and you know just how he saw the world and how he described it. That was really beautiful. He had a good grasp on how each character was going to tell the version. Howard thought he was a poet, and both is wives and his co-workers at the at the at the grocery store mm -hmm. he wasn't a great poet mm -hmm. but he had this nature about it when he tried to see things in a poetic light it really came through in the book because i really enjoyed those parts yeah just not the horology ness of it all though but then again i mean i think that's what the book is about it's all about i mean it's all about time mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. clocks yeah. and three generations should it win the big award? I don't know. Just as a book, if I randomly picked it up, I wouldn't have been disappointed. <laughs> I don't know if I can say the same. Sorry. Yeah, it's um, it's certainly not a a bad book, but I don't know. Oh, thank God that was closed. If it's worthy of the Pulitzer Prize, it's not. Yeah, I, I, I'll give you that. I did come across this thing, no one would publish it, and he found some small. It was, a, mm -hmm, it was a medical school, and they did a small journal for like <clears throat> everything had to deal with like mental illness or death or something else. Mm -hmm. But it was all like medical kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And he sent this whole book in, and they published it. Oh, and, I didn't know um, that. That's interesting. And he didn't actually realize that he won the award. He saw it on the internet that he won before the Pulitzer people actually called him to inform him. No way! So I thought that would, I mean, that's, rule was broken. Like I said, the, the, the shift in, halfway through a paragraph from point of view to past to present mm -hmm. to, that's my, that's, that's my jam. I usually like books like that, but... I mean, as I said, I think it 
the, the part that was most difficult for me was just the parts that read more like a manual, which you know I hate. Did your opinion of the book change the closer you got to the end? I was thinking mine would, but it didn't. <laughs> you just stayed interesting the whole time. Well, I think I was really interested um, at just how different certain parts of the book were. And I honestly thought, am I reading the same book? Yeah, no, I, I thought yeah. that too. But I, that's, that's part of the reason I think I was so drawn so to it as well. So that's part of the appeal for you. Right. Okay. And plus, I like, I like the, uh, you know, he took a risk and it was, I wouldn't say it's extremely experimental, but it was experimental for what it was. So yeah. I, I thought it was. I, I liked it. I liked it. <laughs> Three stars? <laughs> Three stars isn't bad. That's a C average. You go past the glass. <laughs> you know. Well, that was fun. I mean, I am glad that we read it. Yes. I, I've never even heard of this. I didn't know about it. I didn't know it existed until you told me about yeah, it. Yeah, me neither. And I usually keep up with, with the um, winners of the Pulitzer Prize, but I guess I have been... I haven't been... <laughs>